Hello again. Devil Talk 73 here, the fisherman's friend. I uh, hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and well, as well as your family. This thing that we're going through with this virus is uh, kind of rough, so please stay healthy. What I'm going to try to do to show you now is a, a little variation on the 9-11-1-3 sturgeon farming in California. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to go to San Joaquin Delta. Be sure you have a license. And what we're going to be using now, you have to be a level 34 to go to San Joaquin, first of all, unless you buy a pond pass. And secondly, you're going to need four bottom rods. Okay, all of them rigged up the same way. I use Heavy Chaser 10 foot 2, Leviathan 10,000. 0.011 braid, 8 ounce sinker, a 0.014 titanium liter, and you can use a barbless or just a regular 6 aught hook. I'm going to change that to just a regular 6 aught instead of a barbless. Let's make sure. Okay. Let's see what I've got on the other one. Barbless as well. So I'm going to put us on all four rods, I'm going to put us just a 6 aught hook. Maybe. I won't lose, oops, wrong one, won't lose some, because a barber's hook, sometimes they get off. So we're also going to use spawn sack as our bait, okay, Still, and that's just kind of weird, I don't understand it, why it does that, but sometimes it, you lose your bait when you change hook, sometimes you don't, it's just one of the anomalies in the game. Okay, spawn sack. And you need a four position, four slot bottom rod. So I hope you have one of those. Okay, so here again, San Joaquin Delta. And we're going to travel. They give us a little break, what, 150 bucks on the travel cost. And some people, that's real important. We're going to be fishing here off of Beaver Island. And this is the worst possible night okay this is a little better and this one seems to be the best now i've got a big old net i can keep 1102 pounds uh if you're level 55 i hope you can too because all we're going to fish for is money xp is nice you can either rank up or level up if you're 34 and can get here with the equipment that you need but I'm fishing mainly for just money to get back the money I spent during all that uh, St. Patrick's event. Because I had 15,000 or 15 million and change when I started, and I'm down to 14 million and a half. So that's a lot of money to some people, but I like to keep it because I like to travel around. So we're going to fish the worst possible night, and I think you're going to be surprised. So we'll see what happens. I hope you're surprised. Uh, we're going to start off in the morning. It's okay. Because all we're going to do first is we're going to clip all four rods at 85 feet. We don't, we don't change. We use that same distance. We're only going to fish two positions. La -da -de -da -da, la -da -de -da. Okay. Just cast it out there. It, it don't matter where. You can overcast or undercast. Bring it back to 85. Push down on your middle mouse wheel. Sets at 85. We'll set all four of them that way. Number two. Be sure when you come, though, that you've got number six hooks and spawn sack, because the spawn sack. Uh, they seem to like it a little bit better. I've tried a little bit of other thing. I had one of my buddies that caught most of his on muscle meat. I didn't have as much luck as he did. <laughs> He's just lucky with muscle meat. He catches a little bit of everything with muscle meat. Okay. When we get ready to fish, we're going to go to a private room, so... I don't want to insult anybody, and if anybody wants to ask any questions while I'm fishing, I don't want to ignore people. 
but I, I want to concentrate on, on what we're doing here so I can show you without interruptions. And like I say, if you, I'm going to run this past. Oops, 81. If you use your wheel and go under, you go right back up to 85 and then clip it. Okay. And where we're going to start, we're going to start right over here beside these. Okay. This is where we're going to be fishing. You see this tall tree in this bush, this area right in here. That's what you want to aim in the middle of it, 85 feet out. As soon as you catch one, put your marker there. It makes it easier to catch. Then after we, we're going to fish there roughly 15 to 17 minutes. Then we're going to move over here and the same deal. See that marker there? Okay. See where the trees are and it comes down. We're just just kind of in that area right there. Anywhere right in there. That part there. 85 feet out again. So one there again. Once you catch one there, go ahead and set you a marker. And you'll you'll have it, you'll be ready. Okay. Okay, first of all, let's go to a let's go to our friends only room. Okay. That way, if any of my buddies come on, they'll know what I'm doing. Because I haven't shown anybody else this variation yet on this 9-11-1-3 technique. Okay, rod stand. Press 9 key. Press the 9 key. Oops, I wonder if my rod stand, I forgot it. <laughs> uh, I fished in a... Uh, competition last night and the uh, musk musky topping I came in night which well, is not too bad it's all luck I don't know if I got anything you're supposed to get from one through ten but they they don't tell you whether you get anything so I probably left my rod stand yep <laughs> uh, there it is here it is oops home There it is. Okay. Now we got a rod stand. Now we're going to spend some more money traveling. So I spent a lot of money like that too. Oh, by the way, I'm probably the king of fines. You can ask anybody that knows me that I am, I get fined a lot. My last fine uh, for catching a, I think it's a permit, a blue crab island cost me 30 grand. So, <laughs> And I used to do it a lot down in Louisiana. I'd just lose track of time. And maybe I'd take my eyes off the top of the screen. And when it said your license is about to expire, I didn't see it. Or if I was bringing one in or turning my head or whatever. Because that, that doesn't tell you very much about or doesn't stay on there very long that your license has expired. Okay. Now let's see if we can put a rod stand down. There we go. All right. Let's go over here a little bit. Come back. Set it down. Okay, we're going to start at 9 p.m. Go to tab. Okay. Number one. I like to start with number one. And I, you don't have to aim directly at the at the marker. Just over in that area it seems to work. Up, oh, it put us in another room. That's okay. I just close the chat. Too many things for an old man to remember. <laughs> uh, but I'm only 72. Am I old? I'm so old I fart dust. And something I learned fishing down in uh, Blue Crab Island. You can watch a part of the rig. They'll tell you for sure you got a fish on there. Besides the blinking lights. And like to turn my light off too. So I got one on three. Okay. Now you want to keep that third graph down below the top because when you get up there, you're not really bringing anything in. And I use my space bar, and you see my rod jumping up and down. I'm tapping strike time down on two. I'm tapping the right 
bottom corner of my keyboard, which is a an, an inner key. Tat 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 tat, and it brings the fish in faster. But if you keep it below that that third column, keep it below the top, it'll bring it in faster. Now, let me slide over here a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. This part right here is called a spring arm. And when you got a fish on it, that comes up. It'll come up and down, up and down, up and down. But when it comes up and stays parallel to your rod, you've got a fish on. Without a question. But don't get fooled and let it come up and get parallel and stay there for a split second and go back down. Let your light blink once two three times maybe and then you'll uh, you'll know for sure you have a fish on it's easy to see at night too especially with this uh, braided line now like I said this is the worst possible case now we might get another one before our 15 minutes are up we might if we don't we just don't let me turn the light off see how you can see it Oh, we're going to get another, maybe. Come on, now. With my lights on for the video, it's hard for me to see the the line and everything. So I'll rely on just watching the, the spring arm. And only fish here to, to, until about 15 or 17 minutes. When it gets around 14, I'll start reeling them in. And then we're going to move. usually catch one sometimes two at this location on that they're getting worst possible fishing condition okay we'll start reeling them in and I have caught fish while I was reeling them in I hope y'all are practicing social distancing so we can help stop the spread of this COVID-19 pandemic and when you're outside, when you go anywhere, other than in your yard or in your driveway, please wear a mask. You don't know if somebody's going to walk up and start talking to you. And if you're masked in the house, that's not going to do you any good. If that person comes up to you and starts to sneeze or cough, what do you do? So, uh, okay, now to pick up that. Rod stamp it, point a rod at it, push down on the right mouse button. Now I'm not going to pick it up all the way. I'm going to take it over here and walk over here. Okay. And back up. Put her down. And we might catch one or two here if we're lucky. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But here again, worst case scenario. The roller coaster starts high, goes down, comes back up a little bit for the rest of the night. That's the second best. But the one that starts out high, goes down, comes up, goes down, comes up. That's the best. And you can just fish those two nights. If you go from night to night, it doesn't cost you any coins. All it costs you is $2,000. Here we got one on here. For the extend. On number two. Same deal. This time I'm going to keep an eye out. See, I got it up there. I left up on a fast, up at the top. I let up on my space bar. Can't you see my number four rod for the camera? If he gets up there in the red, I let up on the space bar and it'll go back down. Now keep on tapping that inner button. Try to keep your rod pointed towards your fish. See, red, red. Just a little bit bigger fish than the other one. If I had to hazard a guess. A little bigger. Now we're going to fish here to about a 31 or 32 after. 30, something like that, and you can start reeling in because unless you 
excuse me, <coughs> unless you fish till after 3 a.m. and you can go on to four something if you want to. You you might catch one or two more. That's up to you. But the time that you take fishing that extra time, you could be at another night time, another nine o'clock, and catch you more fish. I think two is probably all we'll probably get. That'd be my guess. So we're at 26. I can turn this off. Because I, I won't use it until I check my video. Because I'm using the microphone on the camera. It seemed to have a better tone than the mic that I used on the headpiece. And... I don't have to worry about talking too low, talking too high. Okay. 28. 29. Start bringing them in slow. One at a time. See, we caught two. There's nothing to holler about. That's two more than we had. And those fish run average about $2,000 a piece. So, Hopefully by the end of the night, we've got 15 or 16 there again on this worst possible night. Now, if you've got that big keeper life guy got that you can get 1102, you're going to get over between 950 and 1,000 pounds on the good nights, which is uh, around $50,000. Okay, same deal. We're just going to pick it up and walk it back over here. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you, buddy. Let's see. Okay, put her down. Advance time to 11. Put them out there. They need to make an invisible camera so I can see through it. <laughs> uh, I tried putting it lower, but it looks. I think everybody looks up my nose. <laughs> And my hairy nose. I can do this. Yeah, there we go. See that rod sticking up there is why I wanted to go to a friends only or a private room. Let's see, that was number four. Interesting. We got one on one, I do believe. Yeah, see how that spring rod is parallel to the to the rod. Oh. Now I want to keep an eye on those other rods. Oops, got one on two. Shift one. Pick up two. Trying to look around the camera, make sure I keep an eye on those other rods. Here we go. Come on in, baby. Come on in. Thank you. And it's a close enough time that I'll throw that one back out. Now I'm going to wait on Bring up number one. Don't take a chance of losing the fish. Tap, 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 tap. See that rod bouncing? That tap, tap, tap. Every time it bounces up is when I'm tapping that inner bar. But if you keep that third column all the way peaked out, the fish ain't coming in. It ain't going nowhere. It's going to take forever to get it in. So maybe that little technique will help you fish, catch more fish faster. So if you don't have bait in the water, hook in the water, chances are you're not going to catch another fish. Okay, let's turn the light off. Step over to the side. I just can't see it with these lights, I'm sorry. That's two. 
that gives us 4, which is almost $8,000. So our night's paid for, trip's paid for. Now we're working on paying for the license. Okay, so we see that spring arm come up, down, up, down. Now it stayed up. So we got one on three. Turn that light off so I can watch the other ones. Whenever it gets up at the top, I, I lit up on a, on that space bar, but I keep on tapping. I don't know if I do any good or not, but I keep on tapping. So we're at 14, and we caught three. Okay, number four. I'll bring it in. Like I say, sometimes when I'm bringing them in, uh, I hook one. <laughs> Those are just gravy. But if you've got the 661 or the 880, chances are you're going to fill your net just about every night. It depends on how lucky you get on this worst possible absence of peak. Sometimes I mess up when I want to do that and I go ahead and push that right mouse button again and get over here. Back her up a little bit. Go to it there. Okay. There again, a lot of people they they wait and wait and wait till their sinker and it's almost said anchor. Their sinker and everything is perfectly still for the cast. You don't have to do that. Because there again, we're casting in an area. We're not casting dead on that marker. We're just casting it in a basic area. But fish move around. Believe it or not. If you like my video, and if it helps you, I'd appreciate if you subscribe. And uh, leave a comment if you'd be so kind. Something you might like, something you don't like. Like I said, I just hope this finds you well and safe. And I hope I can show you how to catch fish for money and XP. Because this is by far and above fishing these four times, 9, 11, 1, 3 a.m. Will get you more XP and more money. A lot of people like to do it on Weeping Willow. The bait is expensive, the travel is expensive, and you have to be at such a higher level to get there that sometimes it doesn't make it intelligent. There we go. Now turn my light off so I can keep track of the other two. The other three, I mean. I got one on three, too. So what I'm going to do, come on in. Come on in. I need you to come on in. Come on. Don't stop on me. Here we go. Thank you. Takes such a long time to lift them out of the water. We got one on three. Stay there, three. Stay there, three. There we go. Thank you. See, we caught five this time. On the better nights, I have caught four at the first location and four at the second location. The best I've ever done was I caught 24 one night. A little over $50,000 in money. I don't remember the XP, but it was it was pretty good too. Okay, number four. See, I'm at 11.29. I'm just going to move on. I want to be able to fish. I'm not looking to scenery. I'm going for money. Give me the money. Show me the money. A 
Maybe if I turn my light on, I can see it. Here we go. Okay, 1 a.m. And I hope nobody's asking me questions about this while I'm fishing. I don't want to appear to be a snob because I'm not. I just I didn't look what room we were going in, so I should have. Robin Hood and Little John walking through the forest, each of them one what the other might say. <laughs> Got one on one. Okay. It don't take long. Put this down here right. Oh, okay. Shift one. Got one on two. Bring me a little bit. Shift two. Got one on three. Bring it in a little bit. Shift three, go back to one. Got one on four too, you see that? Shift one, four. Yeah, number one must have got off. It doesn't say, it just says fish escape because of low line tension, but it doesn't say which one. Uh, it was number three. So now we're going to do number one. And it don't matter whether 27 pound, 37 pound, whatever. We just want to catch a bunch of them. And that's a new one. I haven't, the only place I've run across that fish escape because of low line tension is in Florida when we're fishing for bass. And uh, so that's something new up here with these sturgeon. And you're going to lose fish. It's part of the game. But we got three out, three out of four. And we got enough time. I can throw them back out there and we'll see what happens. It takes about four or five minutes to set them. So it'll be close time to move by the time I get it back out there, but we'll set it back out there. We just need to catch one more, which would make me very happy. That's number two. Number one. Number three is the one that lost the fish, so he took the bait, so we're going to have to bring it in before we throw it out to rebait it. Four. And three. See, it took four minutes to get it out there. By the time we get out there, it's time to start reeling them in. We'll leave them soak out there for about four or five minutes anyhow. If we catch one, it'd be nice. If we don't, that's okay. There's always plenty more fish in, in the water. Turn the light off. That's so I can see the light flashing better. That way I know which color. Because my First rod is white, second rod blue, third rod red, and fourth rod kind of a greenish color, I guess. One more minute. Nah, we'll bring them in. Maybe we'll catch one while we're bringing them in. But I used to do a lot of movement. When I did this, the 9-11 one. 
I'd use a single rod. I catch a few here, a few there, a few here, a few there. And this is so much easier. Use four bottom rods. You're only going to move one time and then back. I guess that's two moves. About three weeks ago now, on a Friday night, I got sicker than a dog. I run a fever Friday and Saturday of 103, a little over. And we didn't know what was going on. So Sunday morning, my wife said, you're going to the hospital. So I went to the emergency room, and they stuck that cotton swab up into my sinuses. And I'm telling you, if you haven't been tested yet, it hurts. Uh, they come back in about an hour or so with a diagnosis that I had flu type A and sent me home, told me, you know, drink just like normal flu, drink plenty of fluids and relax. And uh, that's what I did. And I got better and better. Now the cough, I had that cough, which is an indication really of the COVID, but I didn't have it. I don't know. I don't know if you can have flu type A and COVID at the same time. I don't know. But they said I had type A flu. But that cough hung on for a good 10 or 11 days afterwards. It wasn't any fun. Now here's something I like to do too. I'm not going to fish with that rod again. So I press zero. Up here at the top of my keyboard, and I guess rid of that rod. I'm not going to fish with it anymore. This particular spot. There again, if you like my video, please subscribe. This is going to be a little bit longer than normal because I'm fishing the whole, showing you the whole thing. Twenty-seven. Come on, give us one more. Give us one more. One more. One more. See, we've got uh, 454 pounds, which ain't nothing to sneeze at. Okay, let's get number four in. Number two. Here it is, 130. And you can go a couple, four or five minutes over it. It's, it's not a big deal. there again you want to get back to fishing at a good a good location good time okay deep deep back one do put her down 3 a.m. Don't like losing fish because of low line tension. Because if you put them in a rod stand and they're pulling, kind of world could be low line tension unless it runs straight at you. But I've had to say fish release because of low line tension and the rod be bent. Now, if the rod's bent, you would tend to think it would be tension on a line, but I guess not. It's their game. They can do whatever they want to, I guess. Okay, one. Bringing it away. Shift one, and then at number two. Bringing it away. Shift two, number three. Anyway, shift three, number one. I like to 
try to bring them in the order in which I catch them. I don't know if it really matters, but I seem to have better luck that way. As long as I don't lose any because of low line tension. Come on, fish. Stay on. Stay on. Come on. Get down there. There we go. Come on. Get down there. Lift her up there. There we go. Come on. Stay down. Stay down. Thank you. Come on. A decent pitch, 53 or two. Come on. Okay, shift to four. Got one on number four. Four, come on. Shift four. I'm gonna bring three in a little bit and hopefully it won't do it on line tension. Sometime when you lay them back down on your rod stand and pick them back up, they come in faster. This one seems to be coming in pretty good. Where it was till I said that. <laughs> Two. Come on, two. It won't let me pick up the rod as fast as I want to. See how fast that one came in? After I laid the rod back down. Sometimes you lay the rod back down, you lose them. Number four. Come on. Come on. Did we get all four of them this time? Yep. All right. Yes. I want to get in as fast as I can so I can get over to that other spot and get to fishing again. Somebody watching what I'm doing here or something. Okay, turn the light on so we can see what we're doing. Like I said, I like to start with number one. I don't know why. You can start with four. You can start with any of them as long as you know which one it is. Where's my rod stand? Did I pick it up? I must have picked it up. <laughs> yeah. Hit the wrong button, mouse button. Hit that nine, put it back down there, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Best laid plans of mice and man have to gain a glee. Robbie Burns. All we can do is do the best we can. Can't do no better than your best. Or try for your best. Now, what I'd like, since I caught four over there, what I'd like to do is catch at least two here. If I got lucky, I get three, but I'd like to catch two here if we're lucky. You never know. Might catch none. Like I say, this is this is the worst possible night as far as the weather is concerned. Let's turn the light off so I can see when they start to do something here. If they're going to. All right, 322. Come on, fish. <laughs> Come to power. Catfish, listen to me when I whistle. I'm the catfish whisperer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a grandson. He's the third oldest top number three. 
and he's really got into real life fishing here lately. And he's caught some nice catfish. He's caught some 25 and 30 pounders that he's he's really really proud of. Come on now. We'd like one. We take two or three, but we'd like one. And like I say, when you're fishing here, and I just want to get back into fishing, catching more, you can go on beyond that 330, 335. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just time. If you've got enough room in your net. See, we got 631 pounds. So if we had the 661 net, all it's going to hold is probably one more 50 pounder. Or even a 30 pounder is going to fill it up. So I'm going to go to 33. That's a good round number. <laughs> I was watching my subscribers earlier today. I had 665. I don't like that next number. So I just. I didn't watch it for several hours, and I thought, well, let's take a shot, and I looked, and it was 667, so I didn't have to worry about that, that triple six devil's number. I don't care for that. Come on, give me one. Let's try my trick. Let's bring one in and reset it, see if that doesn't give us a help wake up something, give us a little action. There's my 33. Come on, two more minutes. Two more minutes. Come on, Daddy. One more time. Can we do it just one more time? Come on, Daddy. Come on, Daddy. <laughs> I've heard that a few million times in my life, I believe. One more time, Daddy. Can I do it one more time? Just one more time, please. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got here. We have fifteen twenty nine thousand four hundred ninety two dollars, and I'm telling you, that's the worst case scenario twenty nine thirty thousand dollars, and that's what you'll get with this type of night. Okay, this night's a little better. You see nine and eleven. They're there. 1 o'clock, see it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is right dead in there. You're not going to catch a whole lot there. If you catch 1 or 2, you're lucky. But then 3, 5, 4, 3 is right there. And if you want to fish on beyond that a little bit, beyond that 3.30, you might catch 1 or 2 extra. You never know. But right here, see, 9, 11, 1, and three they're all all decent times and here when it gets 330 332 I just call it quits but here's on a night like this is when I caught uh, 24 so that's it uh, I hope I hope it helps I sincerely hope it helps uh, it's helped me uh, I was down after buying Filling up with bait, I was down quite a bit. See, I got uh, 14.5 now. I was down around 14.2, 14.3. And I've, in, in just six nights, five nights, I got almost $300,000 worth of my money back. So you can do it. So this I have found out to be the fastest way to get money in the game. And if, if XP is what you're looking for, this will do it too. Not only that, Level 34 is all you need to be to come fish here. You don't have to go to Weeping Willow and be a level 50. Okay. Four bottom rods. Set up the way I showed you. Let's see. Let's get rid of this for a second. Four bottom rods. Set up like that. 
with the spawn sack bait and a number six hook. Excuse me, six odd hook. And you're ready to go fishing. Looky here. We got one on while I was just piddling around. Let's see if you'll let me pick it up. You ain't gonna let me pick it up. Let's try to shift one. There we go. Sometimes you have to do a shift one to pick it up. It doesn't like to cooperate. Let's see, that's a 336, so that was worth letting them sit there and soak a little bit, wasn't it? That's probably another two grand. So I asked for one more fish, so thank you. Thank you, game. <laughs> it's a little bit better fish, it looks like. Might be over 50. 47, 48. We'll know when we get it in. said okay that's all I got for you so uh, good luck tight lines catch some fish catch a bunch of fish catch a bunch of big fish here and you'll catch a lot of 50 53 54 fish 55 every once in a while so uh, take care please stay safe and healthy and well practice that social distancing and anytime you're out wear your mask uh, look on the internet there's ways to make no no so masks and they're pretty good the way you tell a good mask is you, you hold it up to the light a bright light and see how much light passes through uh, if you make it out of a handkerchief the way they do it now I like to take two handkerchiefs and lay one on top of the other and then fold it over fold it over and you hold that up to you can hold that up to the sun there ain't no light coming through uh, you can still breathe through it, but there's there's nothing going to come through to you, good Lord willing. So sanitize your hands, keep your hands sanitized with you, and uh, take care of your neighbors. Take care of your old folks. They need help too. Keep your distance. Do the best that you can. So God bless y'all, and I appreciate you very much, and uh, I'll catch you out here again. So if you're ever in a game and you see me, uh, like I say, I hope nobody asked questions while we were in there. Let me take a quick look. No, no conversation. Okay. <laughs> uh, take care. And uh, y'all come back now, you hear? Catch you later.